Now that the patch notes have been released for 322, I can make my build guide for Cold Dot. It's a build that I played a lot and I have lots of experience with it. It's going to be on Occultist. I'm going to discuss why that later. First, I want to show you what the build looks like in three stages of the game. One is going to be at end game, how the build looks like investing 400-500 divines in it. Then there's going to be the version of how the build looks like after um, uh, at level 85 and after investing maybe 20-40 chaos in it. And uh, then there's going to be the third, um, the third stage, how the build looks like uh, right after finishing the 10 acts. Now let's show you this map. I had to redo this video because um, I chose the map with the cannot region mana. So this is what the build looks like with endgame gear. Now I'm going to go to standard and show you how it look how it would look like with about 50 kills in invested. Actually it's even less than 50 kills. So I want to I want to take this out and remove this point because usually this jewel is either expensive or not available in the first day of the league Long day. When I'm ready, store map I'm not before. I'll show you the gear very bad, uh, if you want to look at it, it's like even with 20 kills I can get better gear. I will, the only thing that is important, get a helmet with de determination or malevolence, mana reservation efficiency, throw a deafening essence of loading and if you have money, get the mana reservation efficiency of skills on the implicit. But that's the only thing that's, uh, I would say, more expensive, other than that, all this gear wanted to kill us super cheap now my damage is not great um, this is mainly because I also have very bad gear at league start by the time you would have this level and uh, reach tier 16s you have much much better gear I shouldn't have done that. I need more mana. Yeah, it was my mistake for choosing that mode. But you get the idea how the build works. 
uh, once again, the only thing that is expensive in this version of the build is the helmet. I died because I cho chose that uh, bad mode and I couldn't properly use flasks. Uh, I was taking 600 kills damage per second. Honestly, with 50 kills at league start, I can probably double tri or triple my damage, to be honest. Um, the only thing expensive here, worth more than 2, two or 3 kills, it's going to be the helmet, which is probably going to cost about 10-15 kills. And the, the tabula rasa, that's it. When I'm ready, and um, before. One big difference is going to be... Uh, I mean, I will explain this later on when I show the passive tree. Now, I want to show you the Act 10 called Tot, um, how it looks like. Now, keep in mind, after finishing Act 10, I'm not going... I don't have the Blasphemy yet, but ideally you'd choose the Blasphemy, as, um, the blasphemy Ascendancy, the, the one that allows you to properly use blasphemy to proc um, to proc explosions in my case I was just experimenting with it uh, seeing if this is worth taking unholy authority and honestly it's good if you take either unholy authority or profane bloom uh, both of them are fine don't worry anyway I'll show you how the build looks like this is pretty much how it would look like after finishing act 3 but my character uh, has just finished Act uh, 10. But after finishing Act 3, this is pretty much how the build would look like. Maybe slightly slower because you don't have access to the Silver Flask. But to some extent, it's going to be the same build. There you have it. Now let's go to explain the build and how it works. So, <clears throat> at the build, there are three skills you are going to use. One is going to be Cold Snap. This area, this, uh, this ice here deals damage over time. Creeping Frost deals damage over time. And when Creeping Frost is near an enemy, it will move towards them. So, look at this ice. It's going to move. Like this. Depending on where the monster is. So for example if I shoot it here, it will try to progress, to move to other monsters. Uh, let's see. You can see that it advances forward, like this. Now, and the third skill is going to be uh, Vortex. This build, especially the occultist version that I'm showing, it's going to require you to press lots of buttons. You have to cast curses manually, which is going to be elemental weakness when I'm ready, and uh, frostbite. And also you're going to use frost bomb if you don't have the implicit of uh, inflict exposure on hit. In terms of skill gems, you're going to use arcane surge with flame dash and frostbite. Whenever you have mana, take defiance banner as well as determination and vitality. The auras that are mandatory through the acts is going to be malevolence and clarity and if possible your next aura is going to be temporal chains li linked with blasphemy support as a movement you're going to use shield charge linked with faster attacks and steel skin is going to be on left click we are going to, instead of using a six link i'm going to use uh, Two, two skills linked to other four support gems, so double five link. It's going to be Vortex and Creeping Frost. They are going to be linked to Elemental Focus, 
control destruction, empower, and swift affliction. But in a leak start scenario, you would replace empower with inspiration support because this this build requires lots and lots of mana and inspiration helps with that and instead of swift affliction which is good for bosses you are going to replace it with efficiency cold snap you are going to use it usually socketed in a pair of gloves like this i'm not going to go into details how to craft them i have videos on my channel you can go watch those but usually you want to use cold snap in a pair of gloves with at least uh, plus two aoe or 30% more damage over time and for the gems you are going to use control destruction bone chill and efficiency in a leak start scenario after that you can use awakened elemental focus these are the main uh, links in terms of uh, what stats you're seeking in a leak start scenario just cap your resistances Maybe for the gloves you want to have either plus 2 AoE or damage over time, multiple uh, damage over time. Uh, but in general you're looking for resistances and life. And for the weapon you're looking for plus 1 all, uh, either all spells or cold and some damage over time or, and increase cold damage or spell damage. The shield can be whatever, at least start it really doesn't matter but this is what it would look like in endgame. The amulet, it's a basic amulet with damage over time multiplier and plus 2. It's not even crafted properly. But something that is going to be important later on when you're crafting, it's going to be boots that have uh, drops scorched ground while moving. This is uh, very important. Basically, you want to stay on top of bosses like this. And um, when they are in those flames, they just simply... Uh, have their resistances lowered. As you can see, Remedy minus 12 and not resistances. Before. Then, there's going to be this piece of uh, helmet with the mana reservation efficiency of skills. In a leak start scenario, you would want a helmet that has either malevolence or determination, preferably malevolence because uh, that's what you want. Uh, um, that's the aura that you want mainly. And then if you can afford determination, you can also use determination. But you want male malevolence 30% increase mana reservation efficiency or determination. If possible with the implicit of viewing mana reservation efficiency of skills and just throw a different instance of loading on it. That's it. For a day one scenario. After that when you progress into the end game you can look at the helmet similar to this one. But day one that's what you look for. In terms of flask usually granite, quicksilver and onslaught they're good uh, if you can replace one of if you can also have a quartz flask which is great use that because quartz flask is very good on this build but in general um, you can replace for example granite you can replace it with jade if you really want to but since you are using determination use granite if you go with grace just use jade flask uh, silver flask it's great for clear that's it now let's go over the links that my character has after finishing the campaign and the skill tree up a little bit. Basically the links that I have are uh, similar to a large extent to the links that I would have after finishing library in, uh, in, act, uh, in act 3. And for the, ascend for the Ascendancies, you first go with Void Beacon and then Frigid Wake. After that, taking either Profane Bloom or Unholy Authority, both are fine. Because I took the uh, Unholy Authority, I'm also using Elemental Weakness, but it really doesn't matter. Right now, I don't have enough mana to sustain Blasphemy, and also I don't have the links. Keep in mind, this is how my character looks like after finishing Act 10. My resistances are very bad, as you can see. Uh, but this build is good enough to farm logbooks. It can definitely handle many logbooks with... Um, can even run level 68 logbooks with this build at this point. This is what the gems look like. Cold Snap, Swift Affliction, Control Destruction and Bone Chill. Now, 
Ideally, I would not have Swift Affliction, but this is the, the only four link that I got. Ideally, I would have um, Efficiency here and maybe put Cruelty or Elemental Focus or Control Destruction instead of this Swift Affliction. But it's important that you have Bonchi linked with your Cold Snap. Then here you I have Creeping Frost with Efficiency and Vortex. And the reason why I didn't change this is because uh, I guess I was rushing, I don't pay attention, but I would usually want a double four link. So instead of having vortex here, I would put uh, maybe control destruction and move vortex down here. But I guess uh, I don't have enough sockets, that's why I have it like this. Anyway, um, in terms of uh, main skills that are important, it's going to be shield charge, and you're going to transition to this build after finishing the library and you're, you're also going to want to have malevolence and frost bomb when you apply frost bomb that this bomb doesn't need to explode just the moment you placed it uh, think of it as a curse people are getting cursed and have their resistances lowered by i get i see it was 15 Frostbite, fro Frostbite Flame Dash linked with Arcane Surge. It's whatever. Arcane Surge is not nice for mana regeneration. That's the only reason why you keep it. And uh, yeah, this is basically what it looks like. So I basically have a double thrilling on my skills. And uh, this was like four hours finishing the campaign. When I'm ready. Um, obviously, you can see from my HP but that I don't have a lot. This is what my tree looks like. And now I'm going to explain to you the so let's go back to town I'm going to explain to you a little bit of the leveling process let's go to my POP so here you can select um, the, the trees so here is going to be before the ascendancy what it looks like you're going to go up this way and if you have reached level 8 and you have a blue blue green you're going to take this practical application because you're going to buy added cold and added lightning if you have not uh, received uh, a tree link with blue blue green at this point you would not take practical application and go for frost walker then you'd go bottom take all these nodes right here life on holy dominion light of divinity amplify then precision and then go top, take the life, and after that take spiritual command. You can skip this mastery if you have completed library, but basically when you finish library you want spiritual command. And for the items, here are the skills that I'm using. So here you go to skills and select here before ascendancy, like this. And when you go to items, you also select... Uh, I mean, here I don't have items because, come on, what, what items you can have? Just uh, try to get. Um, yeah. what was that uh, try to get the try to get the ones that give uh, flat damage to spells like fire to spells, uh, cold to spells, lightning to spells. Try to get those ones and don't try to have any link on your ones. Now let's go back to the skills for uh, before the ascendancy. Level 2 to 4, you're going to use Phasing Pulse, you're going to get it from the quest. Linked with Arcane Surge. When you reach the first, uh, the, the coast, you want to level your Phasing Pulse to level 2 before you reach the Mud Flats. In, ma in the Mud Flats, you want to kill the monsters with Freezing Pulse and try to stay close to the monsters. Freezing Pulse deals more damage if you are close to the monsters and it can also freeze them. If you don't stay close to the monsters and you shoot freezing pulse projectiles from afar, you're going to deal far less damage and you're also not going to freeze the enemies. Anyway, when you kill Hayrick and go back to town, now you're going to have you're going to take chance to poison. Look here. Um oh I guess I've here I guess I forgot, so or no, it's here. So you are going to ch take chance to poison, and you are going to link chance to poison with frost bomb and arcane surge if possible. 
For clearing, you're going to use this setup with Frost Bomb, Chance to Poison, Arcane Surge, Holy Flame Totem, and if necessary, for a pack of blue monsters or um, or even a rare monster, you're going to use Freezing Pulse and Flame Wall, and you're going to shoot Freezing Pulse projectiles through the Flame Wall. Because Flame Wall, what it does, it, um, it basically adds uh, fire damage to spells. To projectiles and freezing pulse is a projectile. Try to place flame wall in the on top of a monster and shoot your projectiles from uh, point blank. Like be as close as possible to the enemy so that you deal most damage with freezing pulse. Now, when you reach Brutus, ideally you'd have um, or even a dweller. You want to swap your frost bomb with your freezing pulse because you want to put freezing pulse linked to chance to poison and if possible to arcane surge. But for killing monsters, just have frost bomb linked with the damage supports. When you reach a boss, you're going to replace freezing pulse with frost bomb. I'm mean, not just swap them around. You're still going to use freezing pulse to lower those uh, the enemy's um, cold resistance. But it's not your main DPS. Your main DPS is going to be Flame Wall and Freezing Pulse. And you are also going to drop a Holy Flame Totem. But in general, you want to use Flame Wall close to the boss and shoot Freezing Pulse projectiles. And you would use this strategy until your, uh, you finish Library and you, uh, you switch to Cold Tot. But until that point, you're only going to replace the chance to poison an Arcane Surge with added Lightning and added Cold that you get. In act, uh, in act one after uh, after killing Brutus, I guess, or no, after reaching the after reaching the prison. You're at level sixteen. You can use Cold Snap when clearing. Cold Snap with no gem links, it's okay for clearing. But you want to also use Herald of Ice and summon Skitterbots. And that's basically all you have to do. Your first ascendancy is going to be uh, the witch one, uh, this one right here, the void beacon on the occultist, and then go for frigid wake. Now, for for the other uh, trees, you can just select them here. So this is basically what the tree would look like um, after finishing the campaign, most likely. Try to go left, take all the points on the left, and then go to the right. Then for the items, here you select the Act 410. Basically, these are the items that I finished Act 10 in about 4 hours. When you select level 85 maps and you go to items here, you can also select level 85, and for 3 you can also select it here. Uh, level 85 mapper and there you have the tree right here and the same goes for the end game hopefully you understood this is how you level a cold tot through the early acts one to three and then after one to three you will most likely have a build that looks similar to this one my gems hardly changed mainly because i didn't get uh, better links that's the only reason, but it would look some similar to this one right here. Um, one thing that I did not explain, Cold Snap, you have uh, Frenzy Charges. Basically, if your Cold Snap is on cooldown, but you have a Frenzy char Charge, it will consume one Frenzy Charge to cast Cold Snap, cold snap even if uh, it is on cooldown. And after you switch to Cold Dot, you would want the ones with increased spell damage or scepters with increased elemental damage. Both of them work fine. And your build should look like this after you complete library in Act 3. Uh, pretty much this clear speed is what you're going to have after finishing Act 3. Maybe slightly less attack speed class speed. 